Good evening and welcome to the News Hour Agenda. I'm Madhav Das Gopal Krishnan. Viewers, a series of lamp posts in Karnataka's Kopal have landed in a controversy. The SDPI objected to Hindu symbols attached to the decorative lamps and filed a complaint seeking their removal. The complaint said that the Hindu symbols, which include Lord Ram's bow and arrow, Lord Hanuman's mace, and Lord Venkateshwara's tilak, may harm communal harmony and lead to communal conflict. Now, this bizarre reasoning was even accepted by the local administration, which ordered the removal of such lampposts and also passed directions for action to be initiated against officials of the Karnataka Rural Infrastructure Development Limited. The order to remove the decorated lamps left Hindutva groups fuming over the decision. After uproar from several quarters, the order asking for the removal of lampposts was withdrawn by the local administration. SDPI people objected that uh, this creates the you know uh, disturbances in the society it's not like that say for example in ayodhya the ayodhya pratikaram installed beautiful lamps surya lamps and the dhanish and the barnum everything anything happened till now nothing happened if you go to tripati also according to that particular tradition that particular geographical, uh, the, the historical uh, mm, the tradition, they installed all the lamps. These people wantedly creating problems. That is a main problem. But the withdrawal of the order came after the issue sparked a fierce political fight. The BJP went all guns blazing against the state government, saying that this is another proof of Congress's anti-Hindu mindset. But Congress defended the state administration's decision, saying that installing religious symbols using taxpayers' money should be avoided as it goes against secular principles. We should all avoid any religious symbol. Uh, when, when it comes to the taxpayers' money which is being spent, let it, let it be done in a very, very uh, secular manner. No religion, whether it's a Hindu religion or a Muslim religion or a Christian religion, those symbols need to be avoided by the state. See, it is the Congress government which is developing the Hanuman uh, Anjanadri Hills, which is uh, believed to be Hanuman's Janambhumi. But also, I would like to say that when public money is used for the uh, developmental activities, the religious symbols uh, should not be used across the town, whichever religion it belongs to. Jo log apne ko India alliance keh rahe hai, jo BJP or NDA ke against jo samne khade hai, wo log Bharat ki sanskriti ko nasht karne mein apni safalta maan rahe hai. The very fact that the talk of secularism of the Congress party actually is what in the 1980s, the BJP called pseudo-secularism. Their secularism exists only to run down the majority community and its symbols, whereas pandering to the demands of radicals on the other side. Now, why is there a Mahabharat over the lamppost? Let's decode the political significance of uh, this particular area. The location of the lamppost is in the Anjanadri Hill that is believed to be the birthplace of Lord Hanuman. Uh, when the Prime Minister was in the region in May of 2023, the Prime Minister targeted Congress in the lead-up to the Karnataka polls. The Prime Minister is quoted to have been saying during the course of the campaign that he's fortunate to have come to the land of Hanuman and had said that Congress decided to ban Lord Lord Ram and Jai Bajrangbali slogans were also seen. We had also seen how the Hanuman Chalisa, in fact, that was recited. Now, the Congress government in February this year have promised a special package. The government in its state budget announced special allocation for the Anjanadri Hill and surrounding areas, saying that they hold mythological importance. 100 crore rupees was to be provided to develop tourism in this particular area. You're watching the News Hour at 10, debate number one on Times Now, Super Prime Time. Let's take this across to our guest. Joining us is Madhu and Rao, spokesperson of the BJP. Tushar Gupta is a political analyst. Joining us, we also have Sri Govindan. Uh, Saraswati Swamiji, who will be joining us in a short while. Vivek Bansal is senior leader of the Congress Party. Bridges Kalappa, advocate from Bengaluru, joins us. We also have Tosif Ahmed Khan, who is a lawyer and political analyst, joining us. Let me start first and foremost with you, Vivek Bansal. On the one hand, you have a state budget that allocates to this particular location. On the other hand, you have, you know, word coming in from the SDP, and immediately the local administration swings into action. 
It's after the outrage that this decision is then pulled back. What's really going on? Because the BJP is accusing the state government of plain and simple appeasement and communal politics. See, Madhav, uh, first of all, we have to be very clear on one thing that allocating funds for a particular, for developing a particular uh, a religious spot or a, a religious place or a tourist place is a different thing. And they're basing on, on a public basis where it's, uh, uh, basically the, the textures money is there in these things. I think there should not be any controversy. Today, if we decide to uh, put Hindu religious symbols or Sanatan symbol, uh, symbols, there would be other religious also, uh, religious community they may be wanting, and it, uh, a slanging match is, uh, game starts in that. So uh, why not avoid it on public places, uh, unless and until you pay the charges, whatever the charges of those, uh, and uh, you take the clearance of the district administration, and after that you uh, place, um, uh, you, you, you display those, uh, whatever the buntings, play cards or anything is... Um, uh, so what are you saying? Are you supporting this move or are you against the move? Because the Karnataka government has now beaten a hasty retreat. They're saying it's going to happen. So now you're saying Karnataka so, government is wrong. So the Karnataka government, that's what I'm saying. Allocating a fund for developing a particular religious place is a different thing. And displaying religious uh, billboards or on a, unless and until you take clearance from the district administration, that's a... That's a fundamental... Sir, uh, the Karnataka uh, government has gone back. Its statements are on record. I don't think you've been updating yourself. Uh, let me bring no. in, in fact, Madhu and Rao. Madhu Rao, would you like to tell Mr. Vivek Bansal what is the stated position of the Karnataka government because he appears to... I don't know which side he's arguing for today. No, what else... What? what uh, good evening, uh, Madhu. What can I tell the Congress party where the CM himself is con confused and the DCM himself is confused? What can you talk about the Congress spokespersons? I do not know. Point one. Now, point two, coming to the issue... I'm really flabbergasted to know that a lamppost on a road would be communal in nature. Giving 10,000 crores to minorities is secular in nature. 100 crores allocation to a temple and a lamppost on a road is uh, communal in nature. Killing a calf on the road is secular in nature. Whereas uh, telling Hanuman, Hanuman Chalisa on the road is uh, communal in nature for this. Tipu Jayanti is for them secular in nature, Hanuman Jayanti is communal for them in nature. This is called as pathological hatred by the Congress party against the Hindus. Now, let me remind the Congress party one thing. Now, we have Satya Meva Jayate under the emblem. Do you mean to say that that is from the Mundaka Upanishad? Would you mean to say that that will be removed also? Dare you remove it? Let us see. I mean, this is, this is really, I am astonished by the attitude of the Congress government in Karnataka. I would only say... This is a gift in return to those who have voted for them in power. I mean, this should not have been taken place. That too, at the instance of a extremist organization, so to say, in SDPI, which was told none other than the Kerala High Court in 2022. I mean, they're in hand in gloves and they're in friends in crime, partners in crime. When SDPI says you do it, so do it. So therefore, the Congress party will do it. And what's happening? All right. Let's, let, me, let, me, let, me bring in, let me bring in Rajesh Kalapa on that. Rajesh Kalapa, it's a reward for those who voted them in is what uh, the BJP spokesperson is saying. But here's the problem. The problem is it's being done by an organization called the Karnataka Rural Infrastructure Development Limited. Now, the chairman is a Congress MLA. It is BK Sangameshwar. Why would the state government oppose its own MLA's actions like this? Because that's where the politics starts coming in. Because then there is an impression that goes out that all that is happening is appeasement. And that's the only concern. And that to a suggestion of the SDPI, whose political views are pretty extreme, as we know. See, Madhav, as far as Anjanadri hills are concerned, these are considered to be the birthplace of Hanuman, Lord Hanuman, and this is where uh, actually uh, Lord Rama meets uh, the entire gang of uh, Vanaras who help him to uh, defeat uh, Ravana ultimately. And uh, I, if some development is taking place in terms of the Anjanadri Hills. I think uh, it, it's only fair that uh, there should be some symbols of, uh, you know, uh, either Hanuman or of the Vanaras. Uh, otherwise, it can't be that, you know, when, when the entire basis, in, when Valmiki Ramayana itself speaks of this, then it's only obvious that uh, there would be symbolism which is related to uh, the either the Ramayana or to uh, Hanuman. Now, the very fact that there is a SDPI 
which is raising this issue and there is some kind of uh, you know uh, some kind of a, a, a change in opinion i think is uh, deeply regretful and first of course it's it's a principle accepted principle that generally there should be no use of money public monies for uh, you know any uh, religion but the the point is that this is specifically aimed at developing this as a tourist spot only because of the fact that anja uh, lord hanuman was born here exactly and when that is the case then i i i don't think these principles should actually bear weight and i think as far as lord hanuman is concerned and the, the very purpose of it can you ever imagine ayodhya now to without uh, the symbolism of lord ram i think first thing is that uh, the the sdpi whenever they give some kind of a public representation i think it should be confined to the dustbin right i think the, that's the first thing that the state government must do okay okay interesting point of view but before i go across to tushar i want in fact vivek bansal to respond to that vivek bansal here is brajesh kalapa saying that it's and he's no fan of the bjp he's very clearly coming out and saying that what is wrong in a religious place of such important significance whether it's ayodhya whether it's any other religious place or religious town why not have the symbolism of that place and the government itself is allocating but, money but part of, part of the, i think the controversy the end funds was the cm act On, on this decision, and he has, he has uh, uh, ensured that this decision is taken back. So after that, there should not be any controversy. I would not like to comment after that. And so only since you only said that I am not updated, and you have updated me on this. So uh, after that, there is uh, not much room left for me okay. to say anything. Okay, I'm glad we have managed to educate you on this subject. But let me bring in Tushar Gupta. Tushar Gupta. Here's the thing. Now, the state government in the 16th of February this year announced this 100 crores of development uh, for the Anjanadri Hills. They also announced 100 crores for the development of the work properties. So, at some level or the other, can we accuse this government of being a government that's pandering to sentiments? Because they have, they will come out and say, "Look here, we understood the sentiments and we withdrawn the decision." It happened at the district level. Again, to put a very simple contrast, Madhav, Congress's story in Karnataka is very interesting. In a place which is very, very, very religiously important for the Hindus, they first pass an order that religious symbols won't be tolerated. On the contrast, in a place where religion has no business, which is schools, the same Congress in Karnataka says, "Why are you questioning the hijab in the presence of schools?" So you see this story of contrasting secularism of the Congress in Karnataka is very interesting. They oppose the religious symbols of the Hindus, saying we must respect all faiths, but they support hijab in schools, saying oh we respect all faiths. You know this is the contrasting secularism of the government of the Congress government in Karnataka. And I want to ask one more question to the Congress spokesperson now that he's updated on the subject. Rahul Gandhi in the Parliament said while pointing towards the BJP. ये हिंदू हिंसक हैं। We all remember that parliamentary address. Is this order or was this order an extension of that mentality of the Congress? Is it a top-down approach? Because Congress in Karnataka used to be very secular in the truest sense. Today it is no longer. Today also it is only after the pressure in the media, amongst observers, commentators, that the order was withdrawn. But my dear, my simple question: Why does a party that supports religion in a place where religion has no business? Questions religion in the most holiest places for the Hindus of Karnataka and India. That's my question. Okay, uh, Tosif, I think you should respond to that because Tosif here's the it's an irony. He's saying schools perhaps there should be no place for religion, but a religious place where there should be religion, there there is a dual stand being taken by the Congress party. Is Tushar's view? Please respond to that. The mother of the mood question here is state money, the the taxpayers' monies. is being spent on a on a project which has a religious symbol and therefore it is non secular and therefore it should not be practiced that's the that's the main point i just said just like i just said the state uh, spent 100 crores on work were, also were withdrawn i just said i just in my question to tushar you would have heard me on the 16th of february like in the state budget mr sidramaya and the chief minister who also happens to be the finance minister said that there will be 100 crores for work properties Now in India we have a principle of secularism where we are bringing in all religions yes, and we allow all to practice their religions equally. Yes, so, so that that principle has to apply then, sir. All mother, we are. 
you're so t quick to interrupt me, ask me a follow-up question, and not with BJP. Anyway, that's how you have always been. No, no, you that's not fair at all. Uh, that's not fair. I'm just so clarifying the, the point you made. That's all. The central Please have your proposed, say. Uh, all right, in your own, the central government withdrew uh, high subsidy because state money, the exchequer money cannot be spent for any religious purposes. That's fine. No one objected to it. I stand by it. Every Muslim community stood by it and never objected. State high subsidy was withdrawn to, so that the state exchequer money should not be spent on this. Similarly, this is a very small matter. As you yourself said, it's a matter of a lamppost. Why it is being discussed? A small municipality matter discussed on a national channel which has a larger viewer such as yourself. You know, there's a, there's a conspiracy behind why this is being discussed in your channel. Because right now, there's a huge outrage against crimes against women in India. And to cover up <laughs> Yogi Adityanath's, uh, you know, uh, attempt to protect some people in Farakkabad rape and murder case, minor girl, Dalit girl, were found hanging from the tree, from the same scarf. And police is saying, oh, it's a matter of suicide. Two girls who went out of home in the night to attend a Janmashtami celebration in the near temple. They were in the morning Tossif. found hanging on the Tossif. tree. Police is saying Tossif. they found they, both the girl committed suicide, hung her themselves from the one same scarf. And Tossif, to for the last this three, matter, not to For the last not three weeks, the two and a half weeks at least, we have been discussing case, women's safety. Demand, on the show, we have discussed not just Bengal, we have discussed Badlapur, no, we have discussed no, Kerala, and we continue to cover those stories Badlapur, right through the day. I don't, like I don't think it's fair of you to make never, that comment, but since you've you said it, not, I will ask Tushar to respond to you. Tushar Gupta. Tushar Gupta, please respond. It's an attempt to divert from crimes against women taking place in UP. Please respond to Tosif. Madhav, we still haven't got our answer to the contrasting secularism practiced by the Congress in Karnataka on the record. He cannot answer why there is no problem with religion in schools that are funded by the taxpayers, but a problem with religious symbols in a place dear to Hindus. He's not answered that. He's talking about taxpayers' money. The works properties, 100 crore allotment in the budget is also taxpayers' money. The funds that are being diverted from the marginalized community's budget JP towards BDSL funding no freebies in Karnataka, which is taking a fiscal toll on the state, is also taxpayers' money. If you're so worried about taxpayers' money, then be worried about it constantly. You were not worried about students not being able to go to schools because of the mindless protests that were going on. That was also taxpayer money. That is running those schools. Why this definition of taxpayer money? And since you're on taxpayer money, you can you no tell me? Guts. Oh, you talk. You want you to talk no about spine. tax subsidies? One second. One second. One second. One second. No cross talk, please. Then answer my Nobody one question. interrupted you. One question. One second. Let him complete. You can respond to him. No. Then, no. Then tell me, Madhav. No, no. He's talking about spine and taxpayer money. One simple question. Answer that. I will end the debate from my side here and then. Which is that one religion where the places of worship. They, that are taxed by the government. Their finances are controlled by the government. You're talking about Hajj subsidy. Answer this. Are temples controlled by the government or not? Are their finances controlled by the government or not? Yes or no? Is it the same for other religions? Yes or no? Answer that and we'll stop talking about Hajj subsidy right now. Tosif? Not a single word on Farakkabad. You have no spine, bro. I know. I know people like you. You have, cannot, you can never take a stand against Yogi Adityanath. Okay. You don't Tossif, have that in your Tossif, stand. let's be, you let's be fair. That's a very important issue. I'm not going to take you away from that. We have certainly covered women. all of these issues right through the date against women. So I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm, I want to keep this debate focused. Kindly allow me the time to bring in uh, also on our panel, Sri Govindananda Saraswati Swamiji, who's a president of the Sri Hanuman Janmabhumi Tirtha Kshetra Trust, uh, Pampak Kshetra Kishkinda Swami Hampi. Govindananda Swaraswati ji, let me ask you a simple question. Today you have a situation where there are people saying that why is this debate on national television? It's a small local issue. Why are you debating it? It's an attempt to divert from other issues, including crimes against women. What will you say to them, sir? Uh, Anjani Garbha Sambhuta Kapindra Sachivottama Rama Prayanam Stubhyam Hanuman Raksha Sarvada First of all, uh, it's reaching my voice, na? Yes, we can hear you. Everybody Please can go hear. ahead. 
you, you, can, you can able to hear my voice? Yes, right. we can. Uh, first of all, uh, let me clearly put my opinions. It's not my opinion, facts. Because I'm traveling all over India, I'm observing all the strategies of the so-called SDPI jointly working with PFI. It's a toolkit working systematically, not only in Karnataka, in Uttar Pradesh, from Kerala, from Kashmir. These people unnecessary, unnecessarily raising these controversies. Lot of panel, lot of people, they are discussing a lot. Everybody, they are keep on repeating this taxpayers' money, taxpayers' money. I wanted to ask one question to you. If you say, in our Kishkinda, the birthplace of Lord Hanuma, if the government or some private organization or the municipal corporation or some organization, when they are placing the Hindu religious symbols on the street lamps, what is the problem? Some people, they started raising. It creates a lot of, uh, it leads to the violence and everything. Have you observed the lamps in Ayodhya? How is so beautiful? Everybody they are enjoying, the entire world appreciating. If you, see, if you go to Tirupati, everybody they are appreciating. If you go to Kashi, everybody they are appreciating. Aisa kuch ghatana, durghatana to koi ulekhi nahi hai. Then why unnecessarily creating problems in the birthplace of Lord Hanuman? My question, direct question to all the members, especially, when you, uh, spe uh, uh, when you are bringing this taxpayer's money, I want you to ask the Karnataka government, you are providing subsidy to the Hajj Yatra. Who is that money? When you are giving 40% or 30% or 20% hmm. the subsidy for the Hajj Yatra, is it circularism? Okay. Can anybody can answer in this? Tossi, can Chief Minister Tossi, if you spoke about the central answer? government withdrawing, but the same Hajj subsidy continues from the can side of the state the government. This is an answer to your question. Answer. Would you like to respond can to that? Any Muslim can answer this? No, no, any panelist. Don't Let's not go into the religion of anybody, please. And one second. Let Tossi, one second, one second. Let's, uh, we, no, 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 it's not correct to take any panelist religion. Uh, Tossi, please respond to the pointed question. Since you raised the issue of Hajj subsidy. I'll, I'll, I'll answer that. You see, I'll answer that. See, I'll answer that. Even in our religion, Islam asks people who have money only, people who have means only, it is a duty upon them to go and perform the Hajj only if you have the money. Therefore, there's no question of taking anyone's help or taking the government subsidy. There's no question at all. We only ask that the performance, the, the, the government organizes the Hajj because it is gov gov government who gets the visas and everything approved. And they are they take money from the uh, from the pilgrims. They should just perform their services, whatever money they are taking from. Honestly, nobody is interested in taking subsidy from the government. And if anyone is doing that, please, please, you raise a voice, and no, no Muslim community will oppose it. Madhu, Madhu, there should be no subsidy for anybody the state. Uh, the one, second, one by one, one by one, please, please. I cannot have everyone speaking. I'm requesting all of you. One by one, please allow me to conduct the debate. You will all get a turn, Madhu. If Madhu. First thing I just want to just uh, sound ta Tausif is this. Tausif, there are 6,335 cases of uh, uh, offences against women in Karnataka. I hope you become the advisor to the CM and please tell him because we've been telling him from past one and a half years. He's not giving, he's giving a deaf ear to that point one. Now point two, with regard to the lamppost on the streets, I only say so much. If lamppost cannot be on the streets, then the government should also not be in control of the temples in various states because they do not have the right. That is point number one. Because if that is so, Article 25 to 20, 20 Article 25 to 30 should not exist in true sense. Point one. Now, point two. I mean, look at the Congress Party. They have a skewed thinking about the Hindus. They have all the gumption to pass 1956 Hindu Code of Bills and bring four acts. But they do not have the gumption to government pass a single amendment to the 1937 Sharia Act. This is what the Congress Party is all about, Madhav. Hmm. So let's not talk about secularism. Government if you want to talk about secularism, perhaps we'll have to go through the fundamentals of it, which I do not want to go through. But only one thing I can no, no. say, 
let the Congress your party your act in terms of the Constitution. And if they, if they, if they really, we cannot have multiple they, people speaking. If they, if they, if they really want, if they really want to take off all the cultural identities, so to say, of India, they cannot do it. Dare they do it? BJP will protest against it. All right. This is some kind of attempt at changing the culture of India. Vivek Bansal, that's the question coming in, and he cited examples to show, to prove that. Please respond to him. Culture of India is a composite culture. You just cannot just single out a particular uh, particular symbol that this is confined to. Uh, this is the only uh, 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 symbol of our, of our culture. Our culture is very composite, very diverse, and we have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have to accept that uh, uh, this country is very, very rich in cultures and all, and the diversity of this country needs to be respected and honored and this has been the basic strength of this country and people who just want to uh, give a monolithic picture of our culture I think they are doing a great wrong to this country. I okay. Say this. May, I, may I ask you two questions sir, in this regard and particularly in the context of SDPI Vivek Bansal uh, it is of course very well known that in 2014, 2015 Congress government withdrew cases against several people including those belonging to PFI who were booked for writing in different parts of the state. Keep that aside. When it comes to the SDPI you have the Kerala state president, Muvatupura Ashraf Molvi, who had expressed support to the Congress, saying that there is a strong political sentiment against the BJP at the national level. There are various instances of times when, in fact, uh, the SDPI has extended its support to the Congress party. So, therefore, this reaction of the administration immediately to what the SDPI is saying is some kind of clear political appeasement. Why, is the, why should that even be happening if there are no political links or political you know, attempts being made? Vivek Bansal. Yeah, you see, uh, uh, if, somebody, uh, if some organization tends to extend support to a political party, we cannot say that we, we don't need your support. Unless and until we are pandering to their uh, to their abnormal demands of our, or if it's a quid pro quo. This is Definitely, not pandering. If, if they are supporting us, have we, in lieu of that, what have we done? That they, there is no quid pro quo. Nah? So that, it's a unilateral uh, extension of support. So, there is no pandering here, sir. The initial reaction was not pandering. Should not be construed as pandering. Sorry? The initial reaction of the district administration, should that not be construed as pandering? No, or could no, no. that it not is, be construed as pandering? It, 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 because it, it, they will say it's after the outcry that they acted. No, no, no. If you, district administration may be having what the, uh, what their approach at that point of time may have been, what the situation may have been, that is not pandering. That is just seeing to the exigency of the situation and taking an on-the-spot decision. So okay. this cannot be termed as a pandering to the to the uh, demands of any religious organization or a, a, or a criminal party. Govindaran Saraswati ji, this is not pandering. What the district administration has done, it's not pandering to the SDPI. Please respond to Vivek Bansal. Regarding this, today evening, 5 o'clock only, I called our Karnataka governor. I spoke with him. I gave the entire report to Karnataka governor. He also told me to write a letter. We are not leaving this issue as a small. See, you people are don't know how SDPI is working internally. We are well aware because we are traveling from Kashmir to Kanyakumari and now I am sitting in Delhi where the headquarters of SDPI is located. And I am cautioning all the Karnataka government people, be careful from this, the toolkit of the SDPA along with PFI. Mm. If you want evidences, I will also submit how mm. these people are working. Mm. Every way, what these people they do is, they will go for trial and error. Let us create some nuisance. Let us see how Hindus they will give reply. If Hindus won't give any reply, they will start another nuisance. Mm. If Hindu give, Hindus give reply, they will become calm. This Tossi. is what is happening. Okay, well, let me, let me get in Tosif on this. Tosif, that fellow is Tosif the track record of SDPI, the links between SDPI and the no. Congress, all of these uh, are, you know, it's been spoken about. There's been many controversies surrounding the same. There's even been several uh, candidates uh, in this Lok Sabha election who've come out and said so. There is Lakshman, the recent Congress candidate who lost the Mysore Lok Sabha seat, who has spoken about the background help given by SDPI to the Congress. And thereby, 
it becomes controversial because then it appears that the government is pandering to a certain segment of a section which uh, the SDPI or the perhaps even the Congress wants to placate. First of all, this panelist who spoke before me seems to have free access to the governor. He calls governor, governor answer, answers his phone call, and governor is advising him that you write me a letter. And he is traveling from Kanyakumari to Kashmir, a Kashmir, a place where I don't go. I feel uh, so unsafe, and I feel it's a troubled place to go. And he, is, he has all the protection. He's freely traveling. Wow, what is going on? Governor being a constitutional constitutional post holder should be neutral and should not be uh, seen as partisan or acting towards you know uh, people or inclined to one political party now so far these allegations again sdpi is concerned bjp is in power central government they have they can do whatever they want hmm. if they feel as the when sdpi the is involved in some illegal activities you can ban they them yeah. if you think Plus, that he they happens can, they to be a prominent seer do not do of a very prominent doctrine. religious trust i don't know i don't know if all religious trust seers get access to governors everywhere he certainly seems to have spoken but uh, 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 you would you like to respond to that Govindan saraswati since your name has been taken by tosif would you like to respond to him how did you manage to get access to the governor see I am the person who contacted Chief Minister's office. They are not giving any response to our Hindu religious feelings and sentiments. Then finally I called the governor. Why? I governor know. is not a uh, responsible person. Huh? He is a responsible so person. I will call governor. Up. And one more thing. I myself travelled in Kashmir. I went to up to the Pakistan border. All you people don't know. From yeah. Kishkinda, we started Hanumat oh. Janamabumi Kishkinda, Radhi oh, okay. okay. I myself went to up to Kashmir. Okay, many hands in, going up. Many hands going up. Chauk, we, we chanted Hanuman Chalisa. Okay, many hands going up. Time. Many hands going up. And in fact, British, you know, the point being made over here is this. That even after the Pran Pratishta, we know how there was a huge amount of allocation that was made by the Congress government in Karnataka for the renovation of ancient temples, so on and so forth. I think it was about 100 crores, you know, after all of those controversies that were there in the first place. So, you know, the questions that are there is that uh, taking one position when it comes to uh, what is the political expedient position and what actually the government does. So is the government speaking in multiple voices here is a question that others would ask. See, uh, I don't hold a brief for the Congress party, as you know, but right away, yesterday, there was an advertisement in the newspaper in which the Congress government of Karnataka is giving subsidy for visiting Kashi and, uh, you know, uh, other places of cultural importance, religious importance uh, across the country. So I, I don't think one can apportion and say that Congress is this and, you know, the BJP is this. I'd only like to make one small point. You know, the BJP or whoever it is has consistently been sniping at the SDPI. But the, you must also remember that a so-called very powerful, uh, you know, uh, person is ruling the country for over 10 years now. So what action has he taken against the SDPI? Everybody knows it's a nuisanceical organization. Mm. Everybody knows it foments trouble. Mm. Is, is only Mr. Modi not aware of this fact? Okay. This is a question, I think, which is staring everybody in the face. Why don't they just ban the organization and be done with it? Okay, let me put that question. Tushar, respond to that. And also, along with that uh, question on SDP, I'd like to ask you about Hivanta Biswa Sharma's own position. He has taken a position, you know, about a university of architecture uh, there in his own state, where he talks about three domes. He's referred to, you know, various religions, etc., and also referred to jihad. The point is that religious symbols become controversial even in BJP rule states. No, this is not about the religious symbol becoming controversial. If it was controversial, the district administration wouldn't have voted, uh, waited for a notice from the SDPI to take it down. The district administration in its wisdom did not think there was anything controversial about it. It was only after the nudge from SDPI. And Madhav, from the last 30 minutes, I've been hearing this argument that the government should not be seen, you know, siding with one sort, uh, one category of people or one community and all that. My simple question, again, to the people who are saying that the symbols are wrong, taxpayer money, all that. Are you okay with hijab being promoted in schools run by taxpayer money or not? Because if you're okay with hijab, you cannot be questioning the religious symbols. 
And if you're not okay with hijab, if your stance is that religion has no business in schools, then what is the point of attacking a city that is dear to Hindus? The Hajj subsidy is being given by the Karnataka government, as is the subsidy for other uh, religious uh, trips. Okay. So where is the problem? I do not understand. How can there be contrarian stance within a fortnight? And Mother, one more thing. They're saying, why don't you ban the STPI? The same people, when the PFI was banned by this very government, they're questioning... They took a stance as to why the PFI is being banned. This is against the freedom of speech and expression. Or hmm. the government is acting like a dictator. And I would like to correct my previous speaker. In the last 10 years, we have a prime minister who's governing the country, not ruling the country. There is a fine difference in the political terminology. I would urge you to edu educate yourself. Thank All you. right. All right. Let's leave it there. Let's leave it there for the moment. I'd like to thank Madhu Rao, uh, Shri Govindan Saraswati, Vivek Bansal, Bridesh Kalapath, Tausif Ahmad Khan for joining us. In fact, Tushar Gupta stays with us for debate number two as well.